let's investigate these cases, conventional warfare and guerrilla warfare, using some concrete numbers. We've got Red Army and Blue Army, and Blue Army is less effective on a troop or soldier by soldier basis than Red Army is. This might represent, for example, Blue Army being worse equipped than Red Army. Can Blue Army win, even though it's worse equipped than Red Army? Well, it's certainly possible for that to happen. We'd need three R sub zero squared to be less than two B sub zero squared. What this amounts to saying is that Blue Army can win if it sufficiently outnumbers Red Army. So the way I have this labeled, the x-axis is B sub zero, the y-axis is R sub zero, and I've shaded the regions of the plane where Blue Army will win. Let's say that we're measuring unit size in hundreds of soldiers. So here, Blue Army is still worse equipped than Red Army, but it's got 14. 1,500 soldiers compared to Red Army's two soldiers, it will win the conflict by virtue of simply outnumbering the opponent. Now, having said that, it's not enough for Blue Army to simply outnumber Red Army. They have to outnumber Red Army somewhat significantly. Here is a quality where the two armies are of equal size. And anywhere under this line, Blue Army outnumbers Red Army, but only in this shaded region does Blue Army win. In this region here, Blue Army outnumbers Red Army, but they still lose the fight. What if Blue Army does not significantly outnumber Red Army? Or maybe Blue Army is even smaller than Red Army. Do they have any hope of winning? Well, not with conventional tactics. Let's see what happens if they switch to guerrilla tactics. If Blue Army switches to guerrilla tactics, they will defeat Red Army if B sub zero comma R sub zero is in this shaded region. And here's R sub zero equals B sub zero. And if you look 
look at this region here. In this shaded region, blue army is smaller than red army, and blue army is worse equipped than red army. But Blue Army still wins using guerrilla tactics. Expanding on that, this wedge here represents victory for Red Army when both armies are using conventional tactics. Even though Blue Army outnumbers Red Army. Blue Army outnumbers Red Army here, but it's not enough to make up for the differences in their equipment. If Blue Army can successfully transition to guerrilla tactics, this region here represents a victory for Blue Army. So again, switching to guerrilla tactics causes Blue Army to be successful where they would otherwise lose due to insufficient equipment. Now, when you hear the phrase guerrilla army, you probably have it in your head that we're talking about re a relatively small force. We don't tend to think about giant guerrilla armies, and there's a reason for that. This shaded region represents victory for Blue Army using guerrilla tactics. This shaded region represents victory for Blue Army using regular tactics. If you compare the two, you see this region up here. This region is a region where Red Army will win if Blue Army attempts guerrilla tactics, but lose if Blue Army engages in conventional tactics. Guerrilla tactics are only expected to be effective when the armies are relatively small. This is the only region on the plane where guerrilla tactics will cause Blue Army to win when they would otherwise lose. And if you look at these numbers, we're talking like a hundred soldiers versus a hundred soldiers. You cannot field units, guerrilla units with millions of soldiers in them. It just doesn't work.